For our next video lesson here, what we're going to be talking about is the concept of amines and amines. And as the name implies, all these have to involve nitrogen groups. Now these nitrogen groups have R groups. Now these R's can either be carbons or they can be hydrogens. Now, based on how many they are, we either refer to them as a primary amine, a secondary amine, or a tertiary amine. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. If you've got, we'll have R represent carbon. If you've got a nitrogen attached to one carbon and two hydrogens, this would be known as a primary amine. If you've got an R, so if you have two different carbons attached to a nitrogen, which is attached to a hydrogen, this is known as a secondary amine. Lastly, if you've got a nitrogen attached to three different carbons, this is known as a tertiary amine. So yet again, this discusses this a little bit and along gives another diagram of what it would look like. Now there's different naming rules based on whether the amine is considered the suffix, so the most important group, or as a prefix, so as a side chain. So yet again, just like we've done throughout, what we need to do is we need to look at our order list. Now what I want you to do is we'll notice in this case is that we've got carboxylic acid on the top and we've got amines down here. Now the naming convention will have the suffix as being an amine if it's the most important group. If it's not and it's a side chain, then it'll be an amino group. So let's take a look here at this example right here. What you'll see is we've got a carbon chain. And what do we have here on the end? Well, this is considered to be a carboxylic acid. So priority is we know that this has to be an oic acid. That has to be the priority here. Now we can see this is a four carbon chain, so we can see it's going to be butanoic acid. Now at spot three, we have the amine. But this isn't the most important group, so it's going to be called three amino butanoic acid. Now if we look down here, what you'll see is you've got a ketone group right here and you've got an amine right here. What's more important? Well, let's go back to the list and let's take a look. We have our ketone and we've got an amine. So amine's lower, this is higher, so it's going to have an ending of O-N-E. So if we go back here, we can see it's at spot two. So if we number these, we'll see it's got one, two, three, four, five. Why do we order it that way? It's going to give our ketone the lowest number possible. So it's a two own. We can see it's five carbon chain, so it's going to be pentan. And now we have to remember the prefixes. So we've got a one amino based on what's going on right here. And we have a 5 chloro pentan 2 own. So now, if it's a side group, we've seen how it works. If it's the main group, what we're going to do is we're going to add change the ending to amine. Now, if you just have it as one amine, it's fairly straightforward. It's when you've got a secondary and tertiary amino that or amine group that becomes a little bit harder. We're going to signify these with n dashes. A little confusing, but let's do an example right here. So in this particular case, we can see this is the longest carbon chain. So one, two, three, four, five. So it's a pentan to a it's a pentan to amine chain. We can see this much already. Now what you'll see is coming off the carbon, we've got a methyl group and we've got an ethyl group. So we think about alphabetical rules, E comes before M, so we're going to have an ethyl and a methyl. But to imply that these are coming off the nitrogen directly, we're going to name it as follows. So we're going to have N-ethyl, which is this piece right here, and then we're going to have N-methyl, which is this piece right here. And then the pentan 2-amine implies that this is our main chain, which is attached to this nitrogen group. So we put N in there to imply this. Now if we look at our next group right here, what you're going to see is you're going to see that we've got our main chain being right here. So one, two, three. So this is going to propan one amine. Now you've got a CH3 group here, and you've got a CH3 group here. So you've got two of them. So it's going to be N comma N dimethyl propan one amine. 
Now in terms of drawing them, because there are no ends here, this is going to be a primary mean. So I can write NH2. Now it's going to be at spot 3. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's what that one's going to look like for a hexan 3-amine. Now this one here is going to be pentan 3-amine. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is NH2. And this is CH3. Now amines tend to be gases and that they tend to have a very strong odor. So you consider it almost a fishy smell. They have boiling points that are similar to alcohols.